Uh, going to uh, city council matters, old business no, new business no, individual council matters. Uh, I'm going to take a few minutes to tell you about my meeting. Uh, I went to the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council. I was uh, shocked, to say the least. They gave another presentation on 750, and this clown got up, and here's some of the statements that this is... We, drew, we withdrew from this, and it's a darn good thing we did. This group is a bunch of radicals. Here's one of the statements. Cities are less important. In other words, they will become less important. The worldview, counties will become less important also. Only mega regions are important. Now, he's starting to talk about European trade, et cetera, et cetera. So only mega regions, in other words, the entire seven counties would would have a, someone to control them. They are not going to put up with American education system. He's talking about the Europeans. It was about this time when I started getting a little upset and I had a few words, but uh, his, this is, he's, I don't know what world this guy is living in. I mean, what rock they turned over to find this guy. Don't be distracted by today's problems. I mean, where, where, and here's one, I almost got up and left Fascism is the best form of government to implement these these changes. That's not even funny. That's not funny. This is the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council. Fascism is a good form of government to implement these changes. Here's a, a, a wonderful one. We shouldn't have any more of these meetings. Just pass this thing and be done with it. Bureaucracy is anti-American. I mean, this guy is off somewhere and left. I don't know what he's eating, but I don't want any of it. We will be, we will be transcending local contact and local control. Create a utopian community. Now, where have you heard that from back in the 60s? I mean, I was growing up in the 60s, and I was a bit of a hippie myself, but I think I grew out of that a long time ago. You need a very small group of people to make the decisions. In other words, we, the cities, the municipalities, and the counties wouldn't be making the decisions. The group down in Miami, the 750 group, and he said no more than four people. Capitalism is ruthless. Well, duh, where'd you grow up? Um, I thought the Gestapo was going to walk into the room. I, I mean, this guy is an arrogant, pompous ass. Don't ever have anything to do with the 750. We made the right decision. And I'll get off my, my soapbox now. Welcome to the Story of Liberty. Today we have a very special program for you. I have two very wonderful and important ladies with me today who are doing something for you and your liberty. Everybody in Vero Beach and across the country needs to give these ladies a standing ovation for doing something for us that is very important. Everybody has property, whether it be your property that you live at, your car, your vehicle, your home, your iPad. Everybody has property and property rights affect all of us. Today I have with me Rose and Phyllis, who are part of a group called American Coalition for Property Rights. And the purpose of their group is to fight a agenda called 750. And this agenda is basically a way for the federal government to come into our lives and change the way the Constitution allows us to delegate what we do with our property. Uh, Phyllis, what exactly is 750? 750 is a non-governmental organization that consists of over 200 unelected bureaucrats in our seven Florida counties. They are government appointees from outside our area who circumvent the state level, infiltrate local city councils, planning and zoning boards, and the boards of county commissioners. Then they bypass those organizations in order to implement the 750 Community Reengineering Plan. Working under Presidential Executive Order Number 13575, call the Presidential's Council on Sustainable Development. 750 has been assigned to nationalize human settlements into a one-size-fits-all model and federalize our living spaces. They hope, without our knowledge, without our vote, 
without our consent, but with our tax dollars. So basically what 750 is, is the federal government overreaching local government. That's exactly right. Okay, so constitutionally, basically 750 is uh, illegal. It contravenes our constitution. It does. It bypasses the state level it and does. infiltrates our local officials. How did they go about this? Like, how did you find out about them? How did um, 750 get the ability to do this? I mean, how can they over overcome our planning boards? How can they get in and infiltrate our city councils and our development councils and our different things in our city that make these decisions? How how are these people in here? Are they elected? Are they officials? Who are they? They are appointed by the federal government. They are non-governmental organization, but they are appointees, unelected bureaucrats. And in order to educate ourselves, we, a very concerned group of citizens in Vera Beach, attended a design charrette presented in October of 2012 at the Indian River County Commission Chamber. They were then called the Southeast Florida Regional Partnership Sustainable Communities HUD Grant Initiatives. They changed their name to 750, meaning control of seven Florida counties within 50 years. And it was here that we learned about regionalism, sustainable communities, and the end of private property ownership rights. That last sentence is something that every single citizen in the United States of America needs to be concerned about, because this isn't only happening here in Vero Beach. This is happening all over the country. You ladies did something here in Vero Beach that is amazing. You stopped these guys. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. In fact, we were congratulated by Governor Scott at a recent meeting for being the first in the state of Florida to abolish 750 in our city and our county. Unbelievable. You guys are great. I mean, just mm -hmm. really, thank you. And I hope everyone needs to thank you guys because private property, we take it for granted here in the States. We take it for granted. You know, private property, without it, there is no liberty. No liberty. If we can't make a simple decision about where we live and how we live, where is the liberty in that? Health care is under attack. The Second Amendment. I mean, every single one of our liberties is under attack. But if we don't have private property, we have no base to stand on to fight those other things. We need to fight this. And something that you guys, are, you, you actually created a plan, is that correct, for other people to uh, be able to fight this in their communities. Well, we first wanted to educate ourselves. So right. <clears throat> what we learned at the Design Charette, and I quote, their mission was to affect extreme changes in housing and transportation by bringing in millions of passengers by train from Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, and Orlando to use our parks and beaches. And they further intended to rezone our old downtown area in Vero Beach and build a sustainable community using government grants then we had to find out what is a sustainable community. Right. And I found out that it's absolutely an opposite end of private property. It is a cluster of low income, high density population, housing and urban development, stack and pack high rises with demographic quotas located next to the high speed rail service. So basically they wanted to bring this into Vero Beach. That is correct. And, and what, where would have this been located? In the old downtown area. Mm -hmm. And they start using, de, by, they work hand in glove with HUD, DOT, and the M EPA. And they use these government grants to rezone your downtown areas and narrow the streets and pedestrianize them. And eventually, um, the use of automobiles will not be allowed here. Over time, they tax private property owners in the extreme called, this is called a tax sharing basis. They tax the suburbs to pay for this inner city until eventually uh, private homes um, with their individually controlled air conditioners and irrigated lawns are no longer sustainable. And automobiles with their dirty carbon footprints are no longer sustainable under the new EPA regulation. So over time, they phase out private property and your right to own an automobile. Okay, so just to be clear, they want to get rid of individual homes mm -hmm. for like one family dwellings. Correct. Our automobiles. Correct. Our lawns. Correct. Are these people, do, are they American? <laughs> <laughs> because those yeah. three things are three of the main things that the American citizen um, cherishes their lawn, their home, their yard, their single family dwelling that is the American dream. And we have a love affair with our automobiles. 
So what exactly, how are these people actually getting away with this without the American public screaming in protest? This has been happening over time. It or, originated in the United Nations under a document called Agenda 21 for the 21st right. Century. And these turned into executive orders by the president, which are very powerful the methods. They really are dictating. They pass, bypass Congress. They are only accountable to the, the judicial branch and the legislative branch. But when the president appoints the judges and nominates the legislators, and if they are in favor of his ideologies, well, you can see the system of checks and balances is watered down greatly. So this is very powerful. Now, and how can they implement it without our knowing it? They don't want us to know it. If you go to their website, it paints beautiful utopian pictures of these living areas. If you drive into New Jersey or Poughkeepsie or Westchester, you'll see the actual outcome where these dwellings turn into rings of crime and drugs and prostitution. Okay, this, so this has been implemented in some cities now mm-hmm, already. Mm-hmm. 750, you were explaining to me um, at a meeting the other day exactly what 750 stands for. What does that stand for again? It stands for control of seven counties within 50 years, and that started in Indian River County. They moved all the way down the coast, all the way to Key, Key West, and rounding around up toward the um, West Coast. Okay, and how long ago was it that you guys had this battle here in Vero Beach? It began in December is when we scored our victory, but we initially found out about it in October of 2012, and we quickly organized and started educating the public by holding meetings at the public library, making public service announcements, putting letters to the editor. And once people became educated about it, they became enraged. So Uh on December 18th of 2012, we filled the county commission chambers. We made history that day. There was standing room only. We had 20 speakers. And we also, in advance of this, had sat down with our commissioners and our city council members to educate them as well. And they knew nothing of it. And this is how surreptitiously these 750 groups operate. And they changed their names. There's ICLE, the International Council on Uh, local environmental issues. There's Visioning Overlay, Florida Forever. Um, The names that they use sound very attractive. So they tell their city council people that we're we're going to help help your community become more efficient, promote jobs, but it doesn't promote anything except massive government dependence. Right. And anyone who's listened to the story of liberty in the past knows that we put such a strong emphasis on local government because our founders did. And actually, Mm -hmm. you know, um, it goes back to the Hebrew Republic. They always put the most important strength and power for the people in the local government. In fact, until recently, local government was more important than the federal. The federal is not supposed to have this kind of power to come into a local government and tell us how to live. What you ladies did is so important, and I cannot stress that enough. And I, I bet you most people listening today had no idea this was happening the media, I don't think, really covered it. I know you guys got in the paper after you won a uh, victory against 750. I-, I just wish that we could get more people involved with this because you want to know what the big thing is? It affects everybody. If we can't have private property and make a decision on how we want to use that property, I mean, what's the point of America? What is the point of liberty? If you can't make those kind of basic choices, what's next? We need to start waking up and helping people like you guys who are actually willing to go forward and fight these battles for us. We need to support you guys and prop you up. Another thing this is called is regionalism, you were saying? Yes. Now, can you explain to our listeners what regionalism is? Yes. It takes away the local control of the development of your community. And once our locally elected officials are no longer in the picture, then, of course, we no longer have a say. So the regionalists decide... In Miami, for example, what's best for us in Indian River County? And we have no control over it at all. Try picking up the phone and talking to your local representative. You will no longer have a local representative. Oh, so basically what they're going to do, like, let's say, example, in the state of Florida, is they'll divide it up in sections and those will be different regions that they control? What they want to do ultimately is to have no regions. They want to take away county lines and they'll have one massive governmental board to control all areas. There'll be no more Indian River County. And the land grabs that are going out on in the West, they want to take away the big landholders' land 
uh, flood the citrus groves. I mean, this was remarkable. We go to the 750 meetings. We sit in and see what their plans are. And to flood the citrus groves, uh, they hide behind the guise of environmentalism. This is what they do because they want to replenish our aquifers. They come up with these reasons that make no sense. The EPA is an organization that not only stifles business growth, small business growth, but is also ripping away our liberties. You said also the DOT and HUD is involved with this, too. How is HUD involved with this? I I was curious about that. Well, HUD has offered a $4.25 million grant to implement these sustainable communities. That's the initial offering. And once our local officials accept this money and say, yes, let's go forward with this plan, then they have the right to make all the decisions, you see. Now, somebody's not going to give you something for nothing. They're going to say, here's right. all this money, but we are going to decide. Well, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, this is going to go into m- millions of dollars. You you ladies beat <laughs> HUD, the DOT, in the EPA. Have you thought about that? Yeah, they don't like us very much. That is great. <laughs> and I mean, I could high-five you right now. That's some legit stuff right there you guys did. Well, the original, the original document, and I have it, it's called Agenda 21, the Agenda for the 21st Century. Mm-hmm. It is the blueprint for all sustainable communities it's almost a thousand pages right and you can get it on amazon for two thousand five hundred dollars oh my goodness i don't think they want us to read it no. you know <laughs> but you, there are other ways to download it so i did that oh that's good that's very good <laughs> now this i found this really interesting about the future mode of transportation that they have uh already figured out for us what is the future mode of transportation under the 750 plan, the sustainable community? I, I think a lot of our listeners will be really interested in understanding and hearing about this. And you guys have to realize this might sound far fetched, but it's not. This is actually happening. These ladies actually just fought this battle here locally. It is all over the country right now. Governor Rick Scott congratulated these ladies for what they did, which kind of gives it uh, in our minds. A little bit of credibility because you're saying the governor is not going to congratulate these ladies if it's some kind of conspiracy or something. No, this is really happening. Um, tell, explain to our listeners about this transportation issue. Well, as we all know, we have our love affair with a- automobile ownership, and it is actually the most um, efficient economically efficient way to travel. Mm-hmm. The a- a- Amtrak, and there's not one rail system in this country hauling passengers that operates at a profit. So I want Americans to be sitting down because they're just going to love what they have (laughs) planned for transportation. Uh, First of all, with all the people living in the compressed living spaces of a sustainable community, travel will be limited to mass rail transit. This outcome occurs in small stages. And also under the guise of environmentalism, as you know, Americans are driving smaller and smaller and smaller cars, slowed down due to the drilling in the Gulf. And under new EPA and DOT regulations, by the year 2016, all cars will be required to get 35 miles to the gallon. Manipulated oil prices force us into more fuel-efficient cars. CAFE standards are, by the way, resulting in 322 additional deaths every year. In these, um, remember crash dummies? Well, we don't have crash dummies anymore. So the safety standards just keep lowering. People go into hybrids. Now, the government has mandated electric docking stations all the way from Miami, all the way up north to Jacksonville, uh, being installed. And we must have this done. Now, the cars are getting smaller, and we're having to go to all electric cars. Now, eventually, the gas tax will go away. Now, the gas tax is what pays for our roads, the repair of our roads. Then roads starting in the suburbs will deteriorate. This happens over time, slowly over time. Then odometers on electric cars will be taxed by the mile, so people will drive shorter and shorter distances. And more and more people will be forced to give up their private homes and live in sustainable communities where cars will be deemed unsustainable. So the transportation choices will be by foot, by bicycle, or by rail. And these limited housing and transportation standards will be mandated by the 750 plan. Now, if you want to see how this all ends, I suggest that you book a flight to Moscow or Beijing because this is where sustainable communities are used. This is what our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents ran from and came here for. Exactly. Um, This is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe that we have fallen to a point this low that this is happening, and they are sneaky. 
You know, people do not realize this is happening. We knew that this did not was not an American idea. Mm -hmm. So we very quickly formed our group and started educating others, holding meetings. I was asked to speak at Rotary Clubs, civic organizations. Um, we held public library um, question and answer and educational films with written materials and spoke to our commissioners. And people slowly realized that this is not something we, we want. Uh, one of my favorite groups that I spoke to, Jenna, were the veterans. Mm -hmm. Of all the people that I spoke to, I felt that they deserved to know most, most, and they got it within a second. They understood it because these veterans of foreign wars fought against this on right. foreign soil, and they realized that we now are fighting it on home soil. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. 750 is still continuing to implement their agenda of sustainable communities and regionalism in Florida, right? That's right. This is still happening oh, um, yes. all around us. The battle may be won in Vero Beach, but it might not be won necessarily in Palm Beach. Is that how it works? That's right. And we're, we're not finished in Vero Beach either. It okay. is still embedded in our Metropolitan Planning Organization, although I think we can revisit that. And it's in the city of Sebastian. And Sebastian has been designated on 750's map as a train stop. So if you can imagine millions of passengers disembarking in Sebastian in a sustainable community on that beautiful waterfront park area wow. that they work so hard to, to achieve. And Felsmere also and the Indian River State College, our school board did opt out. As, as did Indian River Shores. Well, that's great news. It is. It really is. But our neighbors to the south now in St. Lucie and Martin counties are fighting, and we are joining them to help save our sovereignty by standing up and speaking out at their meetings. Um, there are big summits with 750 on the 19th, 20th, and 21st of June. Rose, I wanted to ask you a question. Yes. 750 didn't just materialize out of no. nowhere. No. What is the bigger plan behind 750? Well, 750 is, is just part of a very, very big plan called Agenda 21. Now, Agenda 21 was conceived in the early 1990s. It was created and defined by the United Nations in 1987, and the action plan to implement it was signed in 1992 by U.S. President Bush, and 178 other nations signed on as well. It was called Agenda 21, the agenda for the 21st century. Considered unsustainable under this plan, middle-class lifestyles, single-family homes, private vehicles, meat-eating air conditioning, appliances, dams, farming are all involved to be eliminated through this plan. Clinton began to implement it in the U.S. in 1993 by giving the American Planning Association a multi-million dollar grant to write a land use legislative blueprint for every municipality in the United States. It is called Growing Smart Legislative Guidebook with Model Statutes for Planning and the Management of Change. This was completed in 2002 and is being used to train planners in every university, college, government planning office in the nation. Growing smart is smart growth, according to this agenda. Now, Maurice Strong, who was the Secretary General on the Earth Summit Conference, stated, current lifestyles and consumption patterns of the affluent middle class involving high meat intake use of fossil fuels and appliances, home and work air conditioning, and suburban housing are not sustainable. He further stated, which is totally atrocious, isn't the only hope for the planet that the industrialized civilization collapse? Isn't it our responsibility to bring that about? Could you imagine what this would do to our lifestyle? It's a whole action plan. This Agenda 21 plan is to be implemented worldwide to inventory and control all land, all water, all minerals, all plants, all animals, all constructions, all means of production, all energy, all education, Unbelievable. all information, and all human beings in the world inventory and control. This is a total 
control concept that is being implemented, including our health care, which I have been involved in quite a bit. Every single hair on your arm should be standing up right now if you just listen to what Rose said. This battle 750 is just coming from this Agenda 21. This is an offshoot of Agenda 21. Exactly. This is one thing in that long list of things they are coming after that belong to us Mm -hmm. as sovereign citizens. This belongs to us. These are our liberties. These are our choices. And they are now taking that control away from us through this plan. This is straight across the board, Mm -hmm. bipartisan, being and stomping on our liberties. Yes. And the effective execution of Agenda 21 will require a profound reorientation of all human society, unlike anything the world has experienced. A lot of this is being done by non-elected bureaucrats. They are being uh, chosen through bureaucracies. It will affect everyone in the future. We really need to wake up. Wake up, America, because before you know it, this action will affect you and everyone around you. The policies, procedures, and laws enacted by government and non-governmental organizations in the name of diversity, community, and earth are diminishing individual liberty, degrading ecology, and threatening human life and happiness across America. These policies are approaching full implementation with little public discourse and with no voter input. While the political environment might seem disheartening to those who value individual liberty, the following opportunities appear to portray a changing political horizon. If we do not wake up now, we will wake up one morning and find ourselves totally controlled by a government which will resemble Russia, communism, socialism, fascism, It's almost like a science fiction type of governmental plan. I just want to thank you both for coming on the Story of Liberty today. I want you guys to go to AmericanCoalitionForPropertyRights.org, this wonderful liberty that we have in this country. Fight for it. Once again, that's American Coalition, the number four, PropertyRights.org. God bless you guys. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, Phyllis, for joining us today. thank you, Jenna, for having us. Thank you, Jenna. God bless you. God bless you, too. God bless you. God bless you. Hello, this is John Bona. Join me every Monday from 4.30 to 5 for the Story of Liberty on Waxy 1370 AM and 107.9 FM and Sundays at 8 on Rush 94.7 FM.